This is the biomimicry lab that I've been working on uh, for lower elementary through, of course, the Learn Biomimicry Educators program. In the scoping phase, I developed my challenge statement of lower elementary students need a way to learn how to identify function in the biomimicry lab so that they can connect with nature and learn from nature directly. The purpose of this is to foster student connectivity directly to the mentorship that nature has to offer. The short-term impacts of this are the cultivation of observation skills and the development of strategic and creative thinking skills. The long-term impacts of this are strong mentorships with nature and the cultivation of curiosity and joy. My desired outcomes are, I want students to think, what can I learn from this organism? And I want students to feel a kinship with nature. And I want them to observe nature, get curious, ask questions, propose answers, and get creative. <clears throat> I really enjoyed the empathy interviews. One of my favorite questions from that is, can you name a time that you learned something from nature? And one of my favorite answers is, I learned from nature that poppy seeds are really fun to watch. The empathy interviews gave me such delight and was deeply informative and gave me great feedback so that I could create uh, a learning environment that really suited their needs. The context mapping was also very expansive as it pertained to students' learning experience and gave a multi-layered perspective throughout seasonal cycles, the planes of development, all the way down to the biomimicry lab and the curriculum itself. The mapping uh, taught me that my learners are surrounded with dynamic learning opportunities that can be demanding. So I can create a curriculum that is accessible to them, as well as an environment that they can step into, understand, enjoy, and apply. <clears throat> Therefore, the biomimicry lab can offer hands-on activities and projects that accentuate student learning and engagement, as well as opportunities to distill concepts, and I can provide scaffolding in curriculum and experiences. In the function stations, uh, we saw that burdock seeds are great at attaching, that feather bar barbules are great at zipping, and that uh, the concave shape of desert plants are great at funneling um, water droplets into their plant base. <clears throat> Hands-on activities and projects like this can help connect students directly with nature's wisdom and help them to follow the threads of curiosity to draw their own conclusions. This also helps me develop the zone of proximal development where I could see where my learners started and where I wanted them to go. And this allowed me to see that they actually love learning about animals, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, that they love climbing trees and uh, they're naturally curious and playful. So using these leverage points, I can create a curriculum with emphasis on the outdoor experience, exploring animals, lab experiments, and focus on a curriculum that allows uh, opportunities for their learner qualities to shine forth, such as their playfulness, their curiosity, and their leadership. The insights from the scoping phase for me were that observation is the springboard into exploration, discovery, and more. It all starts here. And then on to the discovery phase where we observe and journal and sketch, which may seem like simple activities. However, they're actually potent practices that can contain a record of our fascination, intrigue, curiosity, and insight into nature. Through the eyesight journaling activities, uh, I was inspired with a new perspective on journaling and observing. And we applied this um, in class uh, in many ways. And the kids really enjoyed it. The three seeds of biomimicry are woven throughout the curriculum and the lab. And the children uh, came to see nature as model, mentor, measure through simply being in nature 
exploring function, spending time in nature in all seasons through gardening and observing animals. I was able to use many resources to support my, my process, such as Ask Nature and one of my longtime mentors, uh, Margaret McDonald, who is a Montessori educator and director. In Ask Nature, I was able to get some great inspiration from organisms such as dolphins and wolves. Um, it turns out that dolphins learn behaviors uh, as, as adolescent dolphins, they can do a lot of peer-to-peer -peer learning in certain behaviors, which I can apply in my lab with among students so that they can learn from peer-to-peer. I can apply my body language uh, when I'm demonstrating how to sit peacefully while observing deeply during uh, journaling activities, which the kids can really key, on, key in on and apply. So the big takeaways from discovery are that there are multitudes of opportunities for students to embrace the discovery phase through journaling and observation. And it's important for me to make it accessible to all students through sketching, writing, and verbal expressions and other possibilities. I applied life's principles throughout the course and throughout my design, uh, such as lo being locally attuned and responsive, where we can base our observations on local habitats and environments. We can also leverage cyclic processes within the curriculum and work with seasonally appropriate activities. I was able to apply life's principles in many different areas. And then I went on to the creating phase where I created a bird's eye view so I could make my plan of the prototype of the lab itself or the, the lab curriculum itself that included 16 students ages six through nine and we covered material over an eight week period that included the introduction, the three seeds of biomimicry, and we went through the design processes, including explore, discover, create, and evaluate. And then we did some student, uh, the students did observations on class pets, including guinea pigs and a bearded dragon, where we built upon students' discoveries, such as our through journaling and sketching and asking questions and doing research. Climbing strategies inspired by bearded dragons was a topic that we chose to explore. Then we broke into subgroups uh, where we explored finding resting spots to conserve energy while climbing, climbing barefoot and jumping onto surfaces while climbing. How can guinea pigs inspire people to communicate was another topic that we explored. And then we broke into subgroups uh, that included the secret languages using facial expressions, communicating through symbols and body language for sports and games. The big takeaways from the creative phase are that scaffolding are a must, and this helps bring students' imaginations into focus. Uh, the students can gain feedback if I give them reminders to test out their prototypes periodically so that that can kind of keep them on track as we're going forward. Through the evaluation phase, I was able to see that my long-term goals are actually to support students' kinship with nature and to support their observation practices and to tune them into functions of organisms. I can measure their success through engagement, comprehension, understanding, and uh, engaging and, and to help them create engaging prototypes. The, oops, sorry, I just accidentally skipped ahead. I think I was actually gonna tell you about the zone of proximal development then, but um, yeah. So the blended age groups leads to diverse needs and student scaffolding, which I definitely need to do. Um, we were able to reconnect, emulate, have ethos and embody life-centered mindsets throughout the lab. Uh oh, <laughs> uh, where to from here? So after taking eight weeks to explore the biomimicry lab in Lower Elementary, I looked forward. I look forward to experimenting with different scales of time for various activities, such as in smaller chunks of biomimicry, doing it on the fly or in depth 
trying it in different environments, infusing it into my outdoor, uh, my upper elementary outdoor program. And the changes based on feedback are that um, reconnecting with nature and establishing a robust observation skills are essential foundations for understanding function. The Learn Biomimicry Educators course and my project has informed my natural curiosity and beckons me onward as I reach more students with the biomimicry lab, their natural belonging will become amplified and our world will become transformed. So much gratitude to Alistair, Rebecca, Jess, Deb, and Hummingbird cohorts. May we find ourselves in nature again and again. The end. <laughs>